Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the involvement of trunk inside the gait. So under this topic, we are going to talk about six major things. First the flexion and extension. Then we will see the rotation and how it is coupled with the pelvis movements. And then apart from that, we will also look at the abduction, adduction, speed of walking and then finally your EMG activation that is muscle activation that is seen at the trunk during gait. Right? So let's start with the topic. Starting with the flexion and extension, what happens is a low amplitude flexion peak was seen during the heel strike, whereas a low amplitude extension peak was seen during single leg support. So now to understand this, if you take Joe over here, during the initiation of the gait and during the heel strike, when heel strike happens, there is this unbalancing force. When your heel is striking the ground, your trunk will kind of slightly go for flexion. That is the flexion peak that was seen. And then as you are weight bearing when your one foot is swinging and the other one is in stance phase during this when you are accelerating ahead there is slight amount of extension peak that was seen during the gait so it was combination of basically flexion and extension and this unbalancing flexion movement at the trunk during the initial contact was countered by your h1s that is the hip extensors what do i mean by this we saw that h1s that was seen at the hip joint by the glutes if you are not sure about that concept you can go check out my video on power generation and absorption of the gait where i have spoken about this h1s that is the hip extensor activity that is seen so basically when your hip flexion is happening and the heel strike is happening your trunk is going for flexion now this flexion sudden flexion the unbalancing flexion movement is controlled by your hip extensors which will control this sudden forward movement and transition into a nice smooth gait correct there won't be any sudden movement so this h1s is a very important part over here which kind of evens out the excessive movements that are seen in the gait and smoothens it out right apart from this there is also the abduction and adduction that is basically your center of mass right so your center of mass is over here and when you are in non weight bearing correct if you this your if this foot is no, in non weight bearing and this is the weight bearing your center of mass which is over here it will be pulled by the gravity downward and adduction will be happening at the hip joint correct and this adduction movement will be countered by your hip abductors correct again the trunk movement is happening that is the movement is happening in the frontal plane correct so that is the second movement that was seen first was in sagittal plane then in frontal plane correct next part we are going to move on to is the pelvis okay so now pelvis and trunk are not the same thing correct pelvis is a separate entity and trunk is a separate entity that's how it's seen in the gait so pelvis and trunk have a different movement so before we talk about the trunk rotation we first need to know what happens at the pelvis so that we can compare the movement of the pelvis to the trunk right so what happens at the pelvis first the pelvis rotates forward and backward in the transverse plane that is if you look at joe from top basically joe's pelvis is fixed right so you can't really see but basically your pelvis will be going this way as you take one step ahead your pelvis will rotate forward as you take other step ahead your pelvis will rotate forward so as you can see joe's whole trunk is moving ahead right with the pelvis but normally that's not how it occurs we'll see what exactly occurs but pelvis movement is always in sync with the movement of your leg so if you're taking your right step ahead the pelvis will move ahead so that's what happens in the transverse plane that is pelvis rotates forward then what happens in the sagittal plane see this is transverse plane t sagittal plane in sagittal plane it was seen that pelvis moves in a sinusoidal curve i've spoken about this sinusoidal curve before so basically as you walk ahead if you can see 
during heel strike and then stance phase heel strike again and then stance phase if you look at the pelvis if you keep a pointed pelvis the pelvis kind of goes up and down up and down and it's like a sinusoidal pattern so this is the movement of the pelvis in the sagittal plane that we can notice and then again in the frontal plane that is in this plane what we see we see that it translates from side to side as we take step pelvis kind of goes this way this way this way this way as we take right step left step right step left step this movements are very minimal like four to five centimeters that's all right so they are not very noticeable to the naked eye but if you put markers and analyze through a video you can definitely notice these so now that we have understood the movements of the pelvis let's move on to the trunk and pelvis and how they work together so over here what happens is both trunk and pelvis okay that's what both stands for over here rotate in opposite direction now this helps us to reduce the excessive body movement and counterbalance the rotation of the pelvis what do i mean by this so basically what happens in ideal scenario or like in normal gait not joe's gait is as you take your leg ahead your pelvis moves ahead okay but to counterbalance this movement of pelvis your trunk will move in exactly opposite direction that means is this shoulder will go ahead here pelvis will go ahead and over here the shoulder will go ahead so trunk will be moving or rotating in the exactly opposite direction and this will counterbalance the rotation of the pelvis correct so if you read it again both rotate in the opposite direction that is trunk and pelvis which helps to reduce the excessive body movement because pelvis is going in one direction and your trunk is going in the other direction that means these rotatory movements are kind of counterbalanced and there is minimal energy wastage apart from this what other things we see are at high speed of walking the relationship between your head and trunk movement and walking speed is no more linear that means as you keep increasing your speed of walking the coordination between your trunk and the lower limb keeps reducing after a point and then finally the emg activation that is what are the muscle activities that are seen so over here internal external obliques are seen working and they have a very high activity during the initial contact so again over here the trunk is rotating right as we said pelvis is rotating on one side trunk is rotating on the other side so when the rotation is happening obviously internal and external obliques are going to work because of their orientation of fibers and attachment and they cause the rotation at the trunk which is highest at the initial contact apart from that there was also flexion extension mentioned right flexion is caused by what your rectus abdominis so again flexion rectus abdominis will be involved extension is by your erector spinae so lumbar erector spinae will be working and these both the flexion and extension based muscles will be more active during the weight acceptance part during the stance phase correct whereas the muscles that are involved in rotation like your internal and external oblique they'll be working more during the initial contact part so that's all we have for this video what did we cover we saw what are the movements that are occurring at the trunk and the pelvis first if you look at the pelvis in all the three planes there is movement at the pelvis first is rotation right the forward rotation of the pelvis which is exactly opposite to the rotation of the trunk correct then if you look at in the sagittal plane there is a sinusoidal pattern and then in the frontal plane there is transverse movement of the pelvis looking at the trunk there is flexion and extension movement of the trunk which is very low amplitude and counterbalanced by your hip extensors lumbar extensors and and also trunk flexors also apart from that there is rotation movement at the trunk which is initiated and controlled by your internal and external oblique so with that we finish up this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video